Okay. So obviously in a Pong game, we want this to bounce around. Now this is kind of single player tennis ball game. It's not a, a two player Pong game, the old traditional one. It's the single player tennis one that came on a lot of Pong consoles uh, back in like early 80s and late 70s. So let's go to game object, create other. And what we're gonna do is grab a cube, which is a pretty simple object. Again, I'm, so the cube is here. I'm gonna click on the Z, set that to zero. Click on cube again, click on, I think it is R. And what we're gonna do is drag the top one here. So left mouse click and drag. And just make that real large. And I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner by clicking on the, on the X axis. And then click on W. So, and what with the W one, if, if you're in the, if you've changed the, um, how do you say, like the axis tool directly onto Z, that means it's facing straight ahead. And so what you can do in this case, it's only going to move X and Y there because we're looking at it straight on. You can just grab the middle and just drag that around anywhere. Uh, if you click on these ones, it, it, it's constrained to one axis. But if you click on the middle, you can move it around like that. And that's a little bit easier, I find, to do it that way sometimes. So I think this size is good. That should be fine. Um, actually, I'm just going to move it here just so that we can test it because the ball is going in this direction. So um, let me just check that I've got this all set up. So add wall to trigger. Uh, trigger is turned off. Set axis to Z. Okay, that's fine. So we wanted to turn off. Uh, make sure trigger is turned off. That means it's, it becomes a physics object as well, not a um, uh, not a script object. I won't explain all of that right now, but just make sure that its trigger is turned off. Now, if I click play, there we go. So it reacts, there we go, exactly. So the, the ball is actually hitting the wall, which is exactly what we want. Okay, perfect, that's great. So, but as you can see, what happened there is, uh, I'm gonna click play again. So what happened there, there is the ball didn't bounce. We need it to bounce, of course, um, to be a Pong game. So, okay, so the bouncy material, ah, of course, yeah. So. Unity, the, the, um, when you download Unity for free, what you get is a set of standard assets. Those assets contain things like uh, scripts or camera effects if you're using the professional version. Uh, they also contain something that's called uh, physics materials. So in this case, what we want is a physics material that makes the ball bouncy. So that's almost like making it like a rubber ball, okay? Because right now the ball is just hitting something and sliding up slowly. Now we could code that, we could code it to say, hey, when you hit a wall, just bounce in the opposite direction uh, by changing the, the uh, x-axis or the y-axis direction. Um, but in Unity, what we want to use is components because it makes it a lot easier to, to, uh, to work with and a lot faster as well. Um, and it also means that you get real-world physics. So I'm not going to code that. I'm just going to do this by bringing in some already pre-built assets. So I'm going to go to Assets. I'm going to go Import Package. And I think it's standard assets mobile, I believe. So I'm just going to double check this. And what we want to find is the, if I can just double check this, I believe it's this one here. So I can't actually find it in this list here. I believe it is this one. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and then if there's any problem, I can, I will adjust this later. So once you've got this list, don't change anything in here. This will all say new and then just click import. And it'll take a second to just import all these assets. And like I say, this is free. This comes with Unity once you download it for free from unity3d.com. And here we go, we've got the standard assets mobile. And um, now it might not be in this one, so I need to check. If it's not, that's no problem. We can, we can re-import. Okay, so it's not. Uh, so let me, da, 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 let me just find this one. Physics materials. So import package, and then I'm going physics materials. Clicking on that one. Okay, and there it is. There's bouncy. Okay. So sorry for that, there, guys. I didn't. Uh, I forgot what I clicked on last time, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you can use these objects, these standard assets, anytime you like, or you can just delete the folder if if you like. But these are these are quite cool to to play around with. Um, so if you want to collapse something inside of the project, you just click on this left triangle here just like in Windows Explorer, and that'll make it smaller, okay? So, we need to get the bouncy material onto the ball. So if I click on Sphere, 
Now, if I go down to here, the sphere collider, so you can see the material we've got none right now, okay? So what we want to do is find the bouncy material. And a quick way to do this, if you've got a, a big project with a lot of assets inside, which is what we usually have, um, yeah, an easy way to do it is just click on this search box and click on and go to bouncy, and there it go. There we go. It's, it, it, it sorts it by what you've just typed in. And then if I left click and left click and drag into the bouncy, okay. If I click on play, there we go. It bounced off. Okay, that's perfect. So now what we've got is a physics ball. We've got the, the sphere is a physics object that has a bouncy material, so, think, so it can bounce off walls and bounce off the paddle. So I think the next point that I wanted to do is, yeah, repeat the wall. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is basically the wall is fine. Now this is, we don't need to recreate another, uh, go through game objects and cube and then recreate another one and then change any other parts. What we can do is just basically uh, copy this. So I'm just going to click enter, change this to wall, so we know that it's the wall. And then I'm going to click command and C, or control and C on the on Windows. So that copies it, and then command and V, or control and C on Windows. Okay. And then the one that was just created is the one that is highlighted here. Okay. And then in the scene, I'm just going to drag that over by left clicking. And then I'm going to grab that last wall again, control and C, or command and V and then control and V, or command and V. And what I'm going to do is rotate this one around because it's going to be the top wall. So I'm clicking on Alt, left mouse click, and then just move the mouse whilst the mouse is over this game scene here. Then I'm going to click on E, which, uh, which brings up the rotation tool. And I'm going to grab this blue, the blue axis rotation tool here. Um, and I'm going to move it to I want it to be exactly 90 degrees so that it is flat. Okay, so I'm just going to, I can go into here, the transform. Uh, you can drag yourself like this, uh, you know, like we've just done here, and you can try and get it perfect if you like, but I like to just go into the transform and then change it by entering the number so that I know it is exactly right. Okay, and then I'm going to click on W so I can get the position tool, drag it up, and then drag it to the right. And then I'm just going to resize that by clicking on R. Okay. Clicking back on W to reposition it. And I'm just trying to get this around the center. Okay. All right. That's fine for now. It pokes out a little bit. Um, but it doesn't matter. We're not after like perfect perfection right now. We're just looking to get the functionality built into the game. So if I click on play now. Bouncing, 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 bouncing down, and then it should bounce off the paddle. So I'm just left clicking and dragging like we did before. And this is real slow at the moment. There we go, and it bounces. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to click off play. And um, one last thing that we need to do, guys, is what will happen sometimes inside of uh, inside of this uh, inside of this scene here is we need to set the minimum speed that the ball will bounce off something. So if the ball hits a wall, if the minimum speed is below a particular threshold, it won't bounce. So for example, the engine will say, hey, the ball needs to be going a minimum speed of one in order to bounce off the wall. If it's going less than that, then it'll just hit the wall and move up. It won't actually bounce, it'll just stick to it. So we need to define that. And I'll just, I'll just give a quick example here. So I'm just gonna quickly drag this over. You don't have to copy this part, don't worry. Uh, I just wanted to give a demonstration if I can do this. And so I think that's about right. And if I click play. Okay, so that didn't work. But what I'm just trying to demonstrate is the uh, is the fact that the ball will, will not bounce uh, once it's below a particular threshold. Okay, I can't do that right now. It's not letting me do it. Okay. Don't worry about that, guys. It's uh, you didn't need to copy that part, but I was just trying to demonstrate that it will it will in fact not bounce if it's below a particular threshold. So what we want to do is just go to Edit and then Project Settings Physics. Ah, that's why because I already set the bounce threshold to 0 0.1. Uh, if I set the bounce threshold to one, then it would be too slow. 
So set that to 0 0.1 and then click enter. And what that does is, like I say, that says that the minimum speed for the bounce is 0 0.1. If this is set too high, then it won't bounce. It'll just hit the wall and kind of scrape up the wall, like we saw originally when we didn't have the bounce material. Okay. So I think that's pretty much it for this video. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to keep these to a certain length so that we're not talking too much and you guys can take them in bite sizes and then and then play around with whatever you've seen in the videos. You know, uh, playing around with the speed. For example, you can set this to, uh, you know, to be a different speed and add a, a bit more challenge. So if I set that to eight and then eight again, click on Control uh, S or Command and S to build it. Make sure it compiles here in the bottom right. Click on play, and uh, we should have a lot faster ball now. Okay, yeah, so there we go. Um, now the ball didn't bounce in the right direction then, but that's something that we'll look at later, and that's something that always happens, you know, uh, during development. We get some strange functionality that we need to fix, and that's fine. So, um, but for now, guys, you know, have a, have a play around. I'm going to come back later and do the next video. Um, what we're going to do is, we're, uh, for this tutorial series, we're going to add in some scoring. Uh, and we're also going to add in the menu scene so that the game comes back and forth between the menu and the game itself. Uh, and then later we're going to deploy that onto onto the uh, a playable website. Uh, so we're going to use Congregate as our example. Uh, I wasn't going to do publishing originally, but I think having shown you guys how to get your game onto a website that, so that other people can play is really rewarding. And that's uh, that's one of the reasons why we build games is obviously because we want to share them and want people to have fun. So, uh, but for now, any questions, as always, you know, um, leave a comment down below. Please subscribe to the channels. Um, anything that you want me to explain more, anything that you see in the game Ping Pong Pinball X on Android or iPhone, uh, let me know and I can explain that one as well and, and, and go a little bit more in-depth on certain features. Uh, but for now, guys, uh, have, have a good time develop, developing, have fun, and I will catch up with you soon.